joining us today. I pray you are having a blessed Sunday. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. First of all, just in case we have anyone out there that has not been justified by their faith according to the word of God, whatever I do, I want to make sure it is according to the word of God. The Bible says we are justified by our faith. You find that in Romans chapter 4 and Romans chapter 5. So if, that word if, that means if we do something. If we believe on God and we believe that God raised his son, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, that's what justifies us according to the word of God. But once we're justified, we are to be sanctified. Once we're sanctified, we can be glorified. So the Bible teaches us different steps that we should take as a newborn baby. First, you get justified the same way our father Abraham was justified. Then you are to get to learn of him. And the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, if we confess with our mouth, that's why I wrote that song many years ago, how if we confess, that word if is there again. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him, that's Yeshua Jesus, his son, from the dead, then this is where you're going to see the word say. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead thou shalt be saved. For out of the heart man believeth. In other words, man continue to believe unto righteousness. And confession is made 
unto salvation. Then Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then you go to uh, Mark 16, 16. He that believeth, he that continue to believe, and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now again, there are two baptisms. Baptism of water, we see that in uh, John, I baptize you with water, but one coming greater than I am, whose shoelace I'm not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the brush harkosh, which is the Holy Ghost, and with fire. And so that's why I say, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, because Yeshua is the one that baptized us with the brush harkosh, Holy Ghost. And so it says, we are to continue to believe. And then you go to, but if we do not continue to believe, we will be damned. That means we bring ourselves under condemnation when we do not continue to believe. It's not enough to be justified by faith and believe God on God and believe God raised Yeshua, Jesus from the dead, and then go away from it. It won't work. That means we will be damned because we went away from what the Bible teaches us we are to continue to do. And then you go to uh, verse John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, that if is there again, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13. He that confesses and forsakes sin, meaning repent, shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper. So we are to follow the way God teaches us through his word. As Yeshua says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Why? Because many went before him, lying spirit, did not always teach the truth. And so Yeshua came to bring forth truth. He did not just come to die for our sin. Yes, he died for the sins of a whole world. And that's why the Bible speaks of how the ungodly, those who are without God, are justified. And this is why you go to John 3. But if we just read John 3, 16, we can miss it. Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world. That means everyone. For God so loved the world, he gave, not he came, he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth, in other words, whomsoever continue to believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But as we said before, many of the newer translations, they changed that word from should to shall. That's a big difference. Should not. That means when we're in Christ, we should not perish. But what happened, we can bring ourselves back under bondage after Yeshua has released us from bondage as Israel. They was in bondage. But once they came out of bondage, they were taken to the wilderness of sin to be tried by the adversary. Common sense should tell even an unbeliever. Because you are adopted out of the world, say, because you came out of a place, that does not mean you can't go back into that place. So God give us freedom to stay out, and he give us freedom to return. How do we know? When Israel came out of Egypt, they returned back to Egypt in their heart, showing us we can come out of the world, and we can return back to the world in our hearts. That means we go away. And that's why Yeshua teach us in John chapter 15, if, that if is there again, if we abide in him and his word abide in us. That's that key is to abide, mean to dwell, mean to stay. And so many of us can come into Yeshua, but are we abiding? Are we staying in Yeshua? Well, we are continuing with our teaching from a few weeks ago, and this one is picking up from uh, Monday night. And then so 
I added something out there on Facebook. I said, added Luke 10, 22. I did not put the scripture out there. But I'm reading uh, from the complete Jewish Bible. It came, this, uh, the Spirit kind of brought this verse back to me uh, early this morning, I think it was. Yes, it was this morning. My Father has handed over everything. Remember, if anyone is following me, I said, I use different colors to bring out different things, to show the different in things. And so it says, my father, that's Yeshua, Jesus' father, has hand handed over everything to me because he passed the test. Because he passed the test, God handed over everything to him. Indeed, no one fully knows. That's something you need to key on. No one fully knows. Other words, sometimes we think we know, but that doesn't mean we fully know because we can think we know, know something and then we can hear something else and then we can change our mind. So we're not only to believe something, we are to fully know something. So he says, indeed, no one fully knows who the son is. So many times we can believe who the Son of God is, but that does not mean we fully know who the Son of God is. Except, now he's going to use the word except. So what he's saying, no one fully knows who the Son is except who? Except the Father. Because the Father fully knows who his Son is. But now he's not finished. He said, and who the Father is. So let me go back in case I missed something. Indeed, no one fully knows. Yes, I had it right. Who the Son is except the Father. Because God knows exactly who his Son is. And who the Father is. Now he's saying something else because and mean additional to what he just said. And who the Father is except the Son. Other words, God fully knows who Yahshua is. Yahshua fully knows who his father is. But now he's going to say something else. And, see, I mean additional. He's not finished. And those to whom the son wishes to reveal him. So, remember, it always is God the father that reveal Yahshua Jesus. He's the one that revealed to us who Yeshua Jesus is. If you do not believe it, you just look at Simon Peter for a perfect example. That it was God who revealed to Simon Peter who Yeshua Jesus is. You can't say was because he still that he still is the same as he was yesterday. And so he said. And no one fully knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Notice, who the Son wishes to reveal him. Well, many times, God have not revealed to us really who his Son is. Well, if you do not believe it, thank you, Roy Charcoal, Holy Ghost. Remember what the Bible said. God did not show Yeshua Jesus to all the people. But to those whom God had chosen before. And so many times, people think God just go around revealing Yeshua Jesus to anybody and everybody. And we think Yeshua go about just revealing his father to anyone. No. That's why the Bible said, said Yeshua will manifest. Jesus says, I will manifest myself to those. That means I'm going to make myself known to you. But who is going to make himself known to? Those who keep my commandments. Those are the people he's going to fully make himself known to. Those who keep his commandments. Well, I heard on TV the other day about someone, uh, I can't remember uh, where it was, but they had put the commandment back into the school. But well, some people do not understand that. They should be in the school. But first of all, let's go back. The first place they need to be is in the home. 
The second place they need to be in every church. Now, the third place they can be, need to be in the school. And I would say, and also number uh, put going back, they should be in the White House. Why? Because maybe if they was in the White House, we wouldn't have so much confusion going on. Maybe if they was in the White House, we would have so many uh, people lying and hating each other and all the stuff that's going on. So they should be in every house. And it should be in the people house. But make sure it's in your house, number one. Because my Bible says you train up the children in the way that they should go. And so my understanding in Israel, they used to have these scroll roll up over the door. And so it's not enough for them to just be in the house. I have them hanging on our refrigerator from when the twin was first born, babies. And they are now 25. They still on there, but that doesn't mean they are reading them, and it doesn't mean they are in them. So it's not enough for it to be in the Bible. It's not enough for them to be in the home. They are to go from being there to in our hearts. And that's why the Bible says, circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. Well, I was also listening to uh, a, prof a prophetess. And she, she getting many things right. But one thing she did say I totally agree with, and when I went back into my book of New Revelation from God, I came across the same thing that she was speaking about, but it was wrong. Because she was saying people need to go back and circumcise their children. Well, when we study the word of God, circumcision was given to different generations. Certain things was only to last throughout generation, which means the Bible says circumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandment. Therefore, it says circumcise the foreskin of your heart because women could not be circumcised. It was only Moses uh, was told to circumcise uh, circumcised his son and Moses circumcised himself and so I think circumcision was given to Abraham and Abraham sorry was to circumcise him son, his son and circumcise himself so he circumcised Isaac and he circumcised himself and so that means men could only be circumcised but everyone can be circumcised in their hearts. That means the commandments of God is what circumcise our heart. That's why they are called holy. They are, they are called pure. They are the holy commandments. They make us holy because it teaches us what love really is. And you cannot love your neighbor without obeying the commandment. You can love them in the flesh. But that does not mean you can love them spiritually. Because you can love someone in the flesh, but when something go wrong, there go the love. So love is to be in our hearts. And I always say the best place to go and look at what love really is, is Romans chapter 13. Oh, no man, but one thing, and that is to love him. And it goes into the 10th commandment. Now, I had no idea I was going to say all of that today, but it came to my spirit when I saw that where people are unlearned and they will fight against things that they are not aware of. They do not have knowledge of. So commandments, I wrote it years ago. Everyone should start teaching it because when you break it down, there's not one thing can hurt anyone but it definitely can help everyone because what happened, people didn't train up their children in the way that God commands them to train them up. And therefore, we have all the hatred, we have the murdering, we have the jealousy, we have the malice, we have the strife, we have all of this stuff going on in our lives because we did not teach people the way they were supposed to teach. That's why the Bible says the commandments of God are not hard. They are not grievous. But what happened, people grieve when they do not, when they don't know them. They grieve because some lying spirit said to them, 
You don't need to obey God's commandment. That was in the Old Testament. That is because you're unlearned. Because if you go to the Old Testament, as you say, which means there is no Old and New uh, Testament, it's the Old and New Blood Covenant. Because you go all the way back to Numbers and, and Exodus and Deuteronomy and through the Bible and start teaching about what? God's command. And what happened people get saved and eternal life completely confused. Justification, completely confused. Justification, that justifies us. Save me to deliver us. Save me to rescue us. And so eternal life is altogether different. And that's why people do not do word searches so they can come out with a good revelation of God's word. So when you go to life eternal, Yeshua teaches us what life eternal is. Not just to believe, remember no one knows me, but whom the Father revealed him, and nobody knows the Father unto whom, but the Son, and to whom the Son revealed him. If you go back and you look, Jesus tell us, eternal life is to know, not believe. Eternal life is to know the one true God and Yeshua Jesus, whom God has sent. So when someone go to Yeshua Jesus and ask him, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He doesn't say thou shalt not as in uh, Deuteronomy, Numbers, or whatever they used the word shalt, S-H-A-L-T. Many times people never even use S-H-A-L-T. They use shall or should. So when they ask him, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What does he say? He said, you know the commandments, do not kill, do not steal, honor thy father and thy mother. And that's why Romans says any other commandment that it wasn't mentioned in Romans chapter 13, he said, and any other commandment, which means there are 10 holy commandments, but there are other commandments, there are other laws. And so people get them confused. So please, people. Do not make fun at the commandment. But it's not enough for them just to be in the school and there to be in the home. It's not enough for them to be in the home. They are to be in the churches. They are to be hanging on every wall. And this so-called president or uh, ex-president had nerve enough to say, Oh, the commandment, uh, thou shalt not steal. He could hardly even get it out. Because he's the one that stole or tried to steal the election. And people need to wake up out of their sleep. But now their salvation is nearer than when they first believed. The, the blind can lead the blind that they both going to fall into a ditch. Number one, he needs them. Because if he needed, if he had them in his heart, maybe he wouldn't be so evil. Maybe he would not only love those who love him or, or vote for him, if he had them. Maybe he could be converted. You can't tell a person, don't do this and you doing that. My Bible says the same one that said one said all ten. And then we have these so-called Christians, so-called believers standing for two things that had nothing to do with them but other people. God gave them power to control their own life, but they won't stand against the lying. They won't stand against the hatred. They won't stand against the malice. They won't stand against the slandering. They stand up for it. And stuff I'm hearing on TV coming from uh, different people with the red hat, it is sad, people. It is sad. They don't know God because if they knew God, they wouldn't talk that way. If they knew God, they would try to collect, uh, correct through the word of God, but not through their lying spirit and their flesh. They don't know God because God doesn't stand with evil. God doesn't tempt anyone. Every man is tempted by his own love. If anyone say God tempted them, God used them, no. They don't know God. But God will allow things to happen. 
So he, I wrote that out there on Facebook the other day. I think it was in one of my teaching. God allowed things to happen. He will lead, He will use a more wicked person to try his people. Notice, he doesn't test, but he does try. He will use a more wicked person to try his people, and then he will turn around and destroy the wicked person that he allowed to try his people. People better wake up. People are better wake up and have discernment. Can't nobody look at that evil man and say that man is of God. No. He only liked those who give him money. He only liked those who say good things about him. He only liked those who show up at his rally. That's not God. He never was president for the whole world. He was of the United States. He only president for those who he think support him. If you do not believe it, everyone that say something against him, watch it. And I'm sure many of you see that. And many of you, while you're in darkness, you refuse to hear the truth. The truth go forth, but you reject the truth. You are blind by your own demon because you don't want the truth. And therefore, you're walking in error and you're living a lie. I'm not going to stand for lies from no one. I don't care who they are. If you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Because God give every person freedom of choice. You have freedom to commit adultery, but it's not of God. Remember we went through that yeah, uh, last Monday. Paul said, everything is prevented for me, but I will not let nothing bring me under bondage. So yeah, they are prevented. They are there to try you. But it's up to you to allow Satan to blind you because God sent Yeshua to be the light of the world. And you can't tell me you're walking in light when you're stumbling over someone is blind and causing you to be blind to the devil. It's a lie. Somebody need to wake up because you are not listening to God. You listening to lying spirit and no spirit going to take you right behind the one you're following. Because the blind cannot lead the blind. That's why years ago I wrote about the Ten Commandments, broke everyone down. And so those out there who are making fun and do not understand, they are there for a purpose. That we don't have the hatred or should not have the hatred we have in the world today. They are there for a purpose that we sh would not lie because Yahshua says no liar will stand in my sight. They are there for a purpose. Once you lie, repent. He that lie, let him lie no more. And this man has been lying for, for years and people just stand for it. But they say that's okay because they want power. No, it's not okay in God's sight. It may be okay in the blind sight. You concerned about abortion, so am I in the word. And abortion is not even in the word of God. What's in the word of God, only in some new translation, it just say, thou shalt do no murder, period. That means if you hate your brother, you are a murder, Trump. You are a murderer because you have more hatred in, in your heart than any man I ever seen in my life. And this prophet is not afraid to call it out. But somebody else say, well... That's him. Yeah, because that's who you want sitting in the White House with all of their demons. Blind can't lead the blind. This world will, will, is, is in torment. Yeah, the commandment should have been there a long time ago in the White House, in your house, before you try to put it in the schoolhouse. But yes, it should be in the schoolhouse. And then someone said, it's part of history. Yes, it is. Because if you study the Bible, a lot of things that are going on today, a lot of words we're using came strictly from the Bible. Like white bread. Light bread. Yeah, that's it. Light bread. A lot of things. Oil, anointing oil. Yeah, it is part of history. That's where it came from, God's word. But a lot of stuff was added later that's not of God. Hallelujah. That was the Rush Harkos. Didn't know I was going there. But it's time to wake up. 
That's why in the book of James it says, it's high time to awake out of your sleep. But now your final deliverance, your final salvation is nearer than when you, what? First believe. Hallelujah. We are continuing on the revelation connecting the dot words from Monday night service. And I don't think I added that what I wanted to add on this particular one. Handling the word of God deceitfully. And that goes right back to handling the word of God deceitfully can take you right back to the Ten Commandments. Handling the word of God deceitfully. Saying that the word of God doesn't mean what is actually meant. Saying that the word of God was done away with because we didn't study the Bible from Genesis through Revelation. The same Tenth Commandment that was in, in uh, Deuteronomy, you find them also in what you call, or some people call, the New. But there is no old and new word of God. That's why it's the blood covenant. That's what was renewed. God's Ten Commandment was never renewed. And when we do not study the word of God, we can really miss it. Because Revelation deal with who will enter into those gates and who will not. And no liar, no deceiver will enter into those gates. No murderer, no hatred. Anyone that have hatred in their hearts and they think they're going to heaven, you can go there and be cast right back down to hell because the ungodly, those who are without God, will not even stand in the judgment. The only one going to stand in the judgment is those who was once in Yeshua the Messiah. But they didn't overcome the world. The world overcame them. That's why Yeshua said, He that overcometh the world, he that overcometh, the same shall be saved. That means you'll be saved in the life to come. If you do not overcome this world, you will be twice dead, plucked up by the roots, according to the book of Revelation. People need to study the word of God and rightly divide the word of truth of Satan can deceive us. But only if we allow him to deceive us, because greater is he that is in me than Satan who is in the world and want to be in me. But I have power and authority to cast him out. The same way Yeshua had power and authority to cast him out because God gave him power. And we are to have power. That's why the Bible says we are to have power over our adversary. Power. If you stay connected to the power source, you will have power. You will be able to see in the spirit those things who are of God and those things who are not of God. People can't see that man, Trump. It's not of God. He don't know God. He don't know God because if he knew God, he would live the way he live and say the things that he say and does the things that he do if he knew God. And some of these pastors, these uh, prophetess, and all of these things out there with these titles, many of them, they do not know God. Because Yeshua said, I know mine and they know me. If you don't know Yeshua, you do not know God. If you don't know God, you do not know Yeshua because it is God that revealed Yeshua and it is Yeshua that revealed his father. And many of us, he has not been revealed to. And therefore, we are walking in darkness and we are following who we don't even know. Remember the Bible deal with that one as well. Good to see you, Pearlene. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Handling the word of God deceitfully, not truly. Execute the judgment of truth and peace. <clears throat> we had that in there uh, last week, but uh, I think that's where we ended with. And the Spirit brought it back to me. Execute the judgment of truth and peace. See, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Many people are not living right because false doctrine, not truth. And so we're to execute judgment of truth because God is judging the world through Yeshua the Messiah. That's why Yeshua said, my father doesn't judge anyone. 
all judgment is given unto me. So if anyone say God is judging them, they do not even know God. Because Yahshua is the one that judged. That's why God handed everything over into Yahshua Jesus' hand. Hallelujah. It says, But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeys not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive correct correction. Truth is perished and is cut out from their mouth that Jeremiah said it. Now, what's so amazing, I had done this teaching, uh, I guess about three or four weeks ago. I just didn't get a, a going about two weeks, I would say. I just didn't get all the way down to it. But when I saw what was happening with the commandment, it goes right along with the teaching. Don't tell me my God is not awesome. Hallelujah. But thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation <clears throat> that obeyeth, that means does not continue to obey, not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth. See, that's why the Bible says, speak to every man truth. Truth is perished and is cut out from their mouth, that Jeremiah 7. Traitors, headstrong, swollen with conceit, love pleasures rather than God. These, I'll go back into the scripture as we go forward. It is good to know who is speaking and to whom it is speaking to. Who words of these in Jeremiah 9? And I'm reading from King James, paraphrasing some of the words, and then I'll go back and we can see more. And I'm going to use complete Jewish Bible and think in A and P. Oh, that my head was watered and my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep. Day and night for the slain. Uh, it'll give us more as we go forward. But they be all adulterous, on assembly of, uh, of treacherous men. An assembly of treacherous men. Wow. This verse brings us back to our last two services, making spiritual leaders your idol. Because we covered that in the last two teachings, started with Father's Day. How we was talking about natural fathers and spiritual fathers, and which mean uh, King James says spiritual fathers, uh, says fathers, you don't have many instructors, counselors, uh, we don't have many fathers, which mean instructors and counselors. The complete Jewish Bible said we don't have many leaders. Because that's who we are. We are to be leaders. As Paul said, follow me as I follow the Messiah. He was leading them in the correct way. We do not follow people that are not leading us in the correct way. We are to follow those who are leading us according to God's word. That we are being good examples. But we have so many out there today leading many people, but they are bad examples, and God is bringing them forth. He, show, he allowing people to see their sin, that they are saying one thing, but their lives are not uh, supporting what they are teaching, and many of them not even teaching it, because their lives are not following the Word of God. As I said before, I hear people saying one thing. They do not even know who Yeshua is. And it's a shame. You're leading people the wrong way. You're not leading people according to the word of God. You're telling people to say a sinner's prayer and you can be saved and that can't even be found in the word of God. You're telling people to plead the blood and that can be found, cannot be found in the word of God. And God never said through his word, Plead the blood over yourself. 
and you could tell people that and they'll correct their ways for a while and they'll fall right back into that false doctrine. I use every scripture I could find of that word plead and not one in there that says plead the blood. See, if the word of God doesn't say it, I'm not going to say it and I'm not going to teach it and I'm not going to do it. Why? Because it is, it's not going anywhere. The Bible just said, confess your sin. You'll find, the Bible says, repent. The Bible did not say, plead your blood, because if you're in Christ, it's just like you're going through a car wash, and you just confess your sin, and the blood washes your sins away. So many people say the blood keeps us. No, it's the power of God that keeps us. That's why we need the word of God, because the word of God is power. And if we know it, we live it, we walk it through, it will keep us from falling. But why so many are falling? They are pleading the blood, but they are not walking in the word or obeying the word of God. Hallelujah. This brings us back again to our last two sermons, making spiritual leader your idols, Daniel 6. Daniel, we do. No, we did not make it there in the last two teachings. The video was interrupted throughout so many scripture. And information did not come through what happened to prophet Daniel and why his God sent his angel, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, to rescue, deliver, save him. Who rescue, delivers, and save us? Most of us should know that. The Lord Yeshua Christ Jesus, the Son of the true, mighty, and most high God. Jeremiah 7, 27, 28 is where we ended on last week. So tell them all this, but they won't listen to you. <laughs> How many times? Yeshua tell us what God said. The disciples tell us what God said. And then we as leaders tell people what God said. <laughs> they do not listen. Sometimes it go through one ear and go right out of the other one. So we're just like that rebellious house, Israel. And Yeshua said he will go early in the morning, send prophets unto them. But they kept casting his word behind their back. That's what's happening today. Too much casting those things that would deliver us, make us free from the attack of our enemy. Those are the things we're casting behind our back. We don't want it. We want things to make our flesh feel good. But when it comes to our hearts, our hearts are filthy. Therefore, if our hearts are filthy, we will not enter into those gates. Because the Bible says, who shall ascend into the heaven? But he that has clean hands and a pure heart. And people do not realize it is the Tenth Commandment that make our hearts pure. It is the Tenth Commandment that circumcise the foreskin of our heart. So in Jeremiah 27, 28, so tell them all this, but they won't listen to you. Likewise, call to them, but they won't answer you. Therefore say to them, this is a nation that has not listened to the voice of Adonai, the Lord, their God. Always remember, both was called Adonai, both was called Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, and God the Father, and we hear the voice of Yeshua. No man have ever heard the voice of God. If we do not believe that, just go to Scripture and notice it's Yeshua, Jesus' voice that we hear. And that's why he said, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. But we are not hearing him. We're hearing other people's voices. So we can't recognize the voice of Christ, the Messiah, from the voice of the adversary. That's why we are not trying spirit. The Bible said, try the spirit by the spirit to see if the spirit is of God and teaches us how to recognize spirit. So many people can't recognize spirit because how can you recognize spirits when God's word is spirit and we're not studying God's word? So how can we recognize spirit? We can't. We're to study God's word because remember Yeshua says, my word, they are spirit. And 
they're alive. See, he wants us to have life, but he wants us to have it more abundantly. He do not want us to have life, and then we lose it in the life to come. Hallelujah. It's sad. Therefore, say to them, this is a nation that has not listened to the voice of God and the Lord their God. They won't take correction. Faithfulness has perished. It has vanished from their mouth. I'll read it again in case we don't get all the way back down to complete that. They won't take correction. Remember, Yeshua says he correct those whom he loves. If he doesn't try to correct you, you bastards. He teaches us that. If we do not try to correct us, we're a bastard. That means he doesn't love us. He has given us over to a reprobate mind. That's a mind God cannot even deal with. Correction. Correction is good. I want him to correct me because I'd rather for him to correct me than to go to hell. Yes, hell is real. And I know I can go to hell. That's why I'm not afraid of hell because I'm not planning to go to hell. So I'm doing my best to live according to the word of God. Not according to man, but according to the word of God. I listen when he speaks. I want to hear his voice. Because if I know who voice is speaking to me, then that's the voice I can follow. But many people... Satan is speaking to them, and they are following Satan's voice. And many of them do not care. Some just unlearn and do not know. But many know and just don't care. That's a big difference. Therefore, say to them, this is a nation that has not listened to the voice of water and not the Lord their God. They won't take correction. Faithfulness. See, it's not enough to be called people. It's not enough to be chosen people. But we are to be faithful. The Bible says those who are with the Lord, they are called, they are chosen, and they are faithful. So you can be called and chosen but not faithful and be cast back out. Cut off just like a limb is cut off on a tree according to John 15. Hallelujah. Truth should make us free whether we believe it or not that morning. Therefore, say to them, this is a nation that have not listened to the voice of God and not the Lord their God. They won't take erection. Faithfulness has perished. See, that was one time people was pretty faithful. As I was speaking on uh, Father's Day, how so many ministers started out being faithful. At least they, the way they would preach and the way they would teach, they sure sound like they was faithful. But now, stuff is coming to the forefront. I mean, falling like unbelievable. I mean, it's hard to believe how so many people seem like they were so faithful. They were standing on truth. They were standing on the word of God when it comes to how one should live. And now they're going away and say, well, I changed my mind. Like, I thought it was an okay, but now... I have revolved. Yeah, that's the word there. You, I have revolved. In other words, I have changed my mind because uh, maybe I'm a part of it and somebody else is a part of it. So therefore, I changed my mind. Yeah. You're going to change your place where you're going to. Now, perish. It has vanished from their mouths. That means they once spoke the truth. Maybe lived the truth. But now, it perished. Remember the Bible says, oh, what nation? Have commandments like all of these. What nation is so blessed to have the Ten Commandments? And they don't even know it. They rejecting it. Not knowing that would make them free for the attack of Satan. Only if they receive it and obey it. Jeremiah 9.1. Now, when I said Jeremiah uh, 9.1. It's in the complete Jewish Bible, but many other translation, it would be 9-2. The, all through this chapter, it's going to be one verse uh, before King James it would be 2. If it say 3, it's going to be 4 or whatever. Okay, I wish, now watch this. I asked the question, who voice, who voice uh, is speaking here? I wish I were out in the desert 
in some travelers lodge, then I could get away from my people and distant myself from them. Indeed, they are all adulterers. A band of traitors is what they are. Second Timothy 3, 4, complete Jewish Bible. Traitors, headstrong, swollen with conceit, loving pleasure rather than God. It's good to know who is speaking and to whom it is speaking to. When we study the Bible, it's always good to focus. Who's speaking here? And who is it speaking to? Psalm 59, 6, complete Jewish Bible. You, Adonai, Elohi, that E-L-O-H-E-I-A, Zabotu, that T-Z-B-A-O-T, which is Hebrew words. God of Israel, that's why I tell people when you study the Bible, especially in complete Jewish Bible, know the difference in the titles. One going to be speaking of God, and one will be speaking of Yahshua, Jesus. That's why Elohim, you're going to see the different names, the titles are different. God of Israel, arouse yourself to punish all the nation. Spare none of their wicked traitors. Now, when you think of traitors, you know, you can be a traitor. You could, you could say, start out uh, following Yahshua. Start out teaching the truth. And then you trade the truth for a lie. Traitors. Psalm 119, 158, complete Jewish Bible. I look at traitors with disgust because they don't keep your word. Notice that. I look at traitors with disgust, like they disgust me because they don't keep your word. In other words, it's one thing to have the word. It's another thing to keep the word. Isaiah 24, 16, complete truth Bible. Oh, get out of there. Oops, got to go back up. Okay, 24, that's Isaiah 24, 16, complete truth Bible. From the forest part of the earth, we have heard them sing. See, a lot of singing going on. Glory to the righteous one. But I say, I am wasting away. I'm wasting away. Otherwise, I'm tired of them singing and saying glory to the righteous one. I'm wasting away. I'm wasting away. Woe to me. Traitors. Betray. Oh, how the traitors betray and betray. In other words, they just keep betraying me. They're not saying what I said. They're just betraying me, saying what they, they want to say. Again, it's good to know who's speaking and to whom it is speaking to. Who words of these in Jeremiah 9? Oh, that my head was watered and my eyes a fountain of tears that I, that I might weep day and night for the slain. For they be all adulterous and assembly of treacherous men. Wow, well, again, this bring me back to our last, oops, I keep going further. This bring me back to our last two service, making spiritual leaders your idol, meaning God. Jeremiah 9, 1, I wish I was out in the desert again. No, I don't want to go there. I went up too far. Here it is. All that I had in the wilderness, a lodging place, a mirror shelter, for wall-faring men. Then I might leave my people and go away from them. But they are all adulterers, worshiping idols. See? Idols? God. Instead of the Lord, they are an assembly of treacherous men, a weak character. Notice that. Not strong character. Weak. And we are following certain people, and that character stinks. But yet, we have the nerve to think this person is of God. And some people preaching the word of God, we are following. But their character stinks. Men without interest.
interpret T. Notice that. Men without integrity. That means our character is not what it should be. Which means, why would anybody want to follow me and I'm lying to them? Why anyone want to follow me and I'm just deceiving them? I'm not telling them what God said. I'm only telling them what I said so I can make them feel good and just let them shout all the way into hell. Not this one. These are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth, peace in your gate. Hand them the word of God deceitfully. It is good to know who's speaking and to whom it's speaking to. Who words are these in Jeremiah 9? I asked that before. Now we're going to answer. 9, 5 and complete Jewish 5 or 6, maybe in King James and AMP and whatever. You inhabit a world of deceit. Remember, the Lord speak of certain things that were going on, and he said, my people love to have it that way. Other words, like other people controlling your life, which means people was free, and they told them they was free, but they didn't want to go free. They wanted somebody to be over them, and they love to have it that way. Christ freed many people, but they still feel like they need someone to lead them. When Christ is the one, the Messiah, that wants to lead them, but they love it that way. You inhabit a world of deceit. Deceitfully, they refuse they refuse. I mean, just refuse. I don't want to read the Word of God. I don't want to study the Word of God. I don't want to listen to the Word of God. They refuse to know me. Notice, he didn't say they refuse to believe on my name. They refuse to know me, says Adonai, the Lord. So, many people that will read Jeremiah and they think this is Jeremiah speaking. It's in the book of Jeremiah, but this is the Lord Yahshua speaking. Notice what I said. You inhabit a world of deceit. Deceit believe they refuse to know me. You know, we already know God and we already get to know his son. It says Adonai. The Lord, as we said before, you look at different words and you can tell the difference. Therefore says Adonai Savotu, I will refrain, no, I will refine them and test them. Other words, God doesn't test us. God tries. But notice this, I will refine them and test them. What else can I do? <laughs> With the daughters of my people. So you know that's the Lord. Their tongue a sharpened arrow. With their mouth they speak deceit. They say nice words to their neighbors. You know, just say nice words. While up inwardly plotting against them. See, I'm never going to plot against anyone. Bring me back. To what I put out there, be careful who you dig a hole for. You just may fall in it yourself. Should I punish them for these things? That's a question. Ask Adonai. Should I not take vision on such, nation, such a nation? Remember what Yeshua said. I will repay. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Acts 3, 22, uh, I don't think I'm going to 26. I think it's 12, 13, 12, 13. It should be. Yeah, Acts 3, 12, and 13. Seeing this, Peter addressed the people. Men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? Or why do you stare at us as if we have made this man walk, uh, walk through some power of godliness of our own? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our fathers, see, fathers, plural, because we have many fathers, 
has glorified his servant Yeshua. So here you see it was God the Father that glorified his son Yeshua Jesus. The same Yeshua Jesus you handed over and disowned. Remember, many disowned him. Before power, even after he had decided to release him. Traitors. Act 3.14. You denied the holy and innocent one, and instead, as for the reprisal of a murderer, you kill the author of life. Many of us are trying to kill the Son of God as he's not who he said he is. Like, just get rid of him. He's God the Father. Yeah, because we don't know the word of God. That's ignorant, unlearned. Luke 9, 44, complete Jewish Bible. Listen very carefully to what I'm going to say. The Son of Man, meaning the Son of God, is about to be portrayed into the hand of men. Luke 12, 9. But whosoever disowns, continue to, me before others will be disowned before God's angels. Only thing we have to do, go to a uh, good example, Matthew chapter uh, number 16, where uh, all the others, nobody confessed him but Simon Peter, and he only confessed the one who confessed him, which was Jesus confessed Simon Peter because Simon Peter confessed him. So he disowned the other. He didn't confess the other 11. Matthew 10, 33. Complete Jewish Bible. But whosoever disowned me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Acts 3, 14. You denied the holy and innocent one. Instead, acts for the reprisal of a murder. You killed the author of life, but God has raised. Who raised? We need to know this. Who's speaking and who is speaking of and who is speaking to. You killed the author of life, that Yeshua Jesus. But God has raised that Yeshua Jesus' father, him from the dead, not himself, his son. Of this we are witnesses. This is what they was witnessing to. And it is through putting trust, faith, in his name that his name has given strength to this man whom you see and know. Because when we put our trust in Yeshua, it gives us strength. We are weak, but then we can become what? Strong. Yes, it is the trust, faith, that comes through Yeshua, which has given him this perfect healing in the presence of you all, because we are to be made complete. Perfect means complete. Now, brothers, I know that you did not understand the significance of what you were doing, neither did your fathers. So many times people do things, but they don't understand what they are really doing. And sometimes we do not care. We just refuse to look, uh, get into scriptures and study to see if we're speaking the truth or we're telling lies. But this is how God fulfilled what he had announced in advance when he spoke through all the prophets, going right back to the book of Hebrews, chapter number one. God spoke to the people, uh, to the fathers, through the prophet. But in these last days, God is speaking to us through his son. That's why he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. Namely, that his Messiah, God Messiah, was to die, Yeshua the Messiah, his son. Therefore, repent. See, many of us not repenting from false teaching. We just keep doing it. Therefore, repent and turn to God. Turn back to God. So that your sin may be erased. Notice it's not that your sin will be erased. That your sin may be erased. So that time of refreshing. See, the word of God refreshes us, whether we believe it or not. May come from the Lord present. And he may send the Messiah Christ appointed in advance for you. That is Yeshua Jesus. He has to remain in heaven until the time comes for, restor for restoring everything. As God said long ago, when he spoke through the holy prophet, see, God is still speaking to who? The holy prophet. But some people, they start prophesying and they get in their flesh 
and they start prophesying lies. As I said, this I mentioned earlier how this prophet, she foretelling things that happened, prophes prophecies she had done years ago. And she calling people out, calling their name out. And as I said, I'll call situation out, but you don't hear me calling names out. And I'm not sure if that's what they should do, but the Lord tell you, you better obey. If he say, call them out, call them out. I know he tell us to call people out, but I'm not sure about just putting their names out there because a lot of stuff you can't believe, a lot of stuff. And, and it just bring me back to all the stuff you see on YouTube. Some of the stuff is true, but you better be careful who you listening to and make sure your spirit is agreeing with it before you receive it. Because a lot of stuff I see, I go, they need to do something about freedom of speech. I'm serious. They need to do something about it. It's just getting outrageous. I looked on YouTube the other day, and they had C.C. Whining had died. And oh, my heart started hurting because I truly believe that is a holy woman. When I listen not to her so only her song, but when I listen to her speak, I believe she's a holy woman. Oh, my heart was hurting so. And then I looked at go another one, CC whining, showing her picture and people standing around her grave, saying she had died. Then I look where they putting uh, women uh, bikinis on men. They need to do something. And then Steve Bannon, somebody really need to, sh God shut his mouth. Not somebody, you do it, God. Shut the lion's mouth. Because the things that man is saying has to do with a lot of hatred, a lot of anger. I mean, just, and many more, not only him, even Trump. Shut the lion's mouth, God. Shut his mouth. Because he causing a lot of confusion, a lot of hatred. Uh, I mean, even people of God don't like each other because they stand with the wicked man and think everybody else ought to stand with that lying spirit. I will not because I can discern spirit that is of God. And I know that man's spirit has nothing to do with not my father God, not Yeshua's father God, maybe your idol God. No, uh-uh. I will not stand for it, and I definitely will not support it. I don't care about how much money he get. I don't care about how many people he draw. Not this prophetess, because she know better. I can discern good from evil when it comes to that man. And some of God's people are blind, and they're going to allow him to lead them right into hell with him. Because if he doesn't repent, and a lot of people of God that's standing for that evil does not repent. They're going straight to hell with him. Actually, there is a famous pastor, and he used to port him and, and put a lot of stuff out there about him. And, and I would message him right on those videos and say what the word of God said. And you know what? I don't see it anymore. But I do see, uh, I didn't say vote for him. I said pray for him. We were to pray when God tell us to pray, but there are times he would tell you not to pray when that person is not, not repenting, not changing. As we said, but he said, he's tired of the singing, <laughs> tired of their words. He's not going to hear you just wasting your time because he don't stand for evil, but sometimes he will allow it because of God's evil people. He will allow it to try them to see what kind of stand they're going to take. And then we get upset and we say, well, this one is standing for abortion. He never told anybody to have an abortion. And abortion, again, is not in scripture. Thou shalt do no murder. So if you stand against abortion, but you're not standing against lies, what does that say about you? If you're standing against homo homosexual, which is Sodom and Gomorrah's spirit, the Bible doesn't use that, only new, uh, uh, newer translation. So if you stand against Sodom and Gomorrah's spirit, but you won't stand against hatred, you won't stand against liars. When the Bible said the same one said once, he said them all. So I stand against them all. 
But God give everyone freedom to lie, freedom to marry the same person, freedom to commit adultery, freedom to serve idol gods, but it's not his will, but he give them freedom to. So don't choose two things and say that's why you're supporting someone, but you are standing for all the other garbage. No, that's not God. That may be your God, but it's definitely not my God, and I'm not afraid to call it out. Holy Ghost said, call it out. So shall I. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid of man. Man doesn't have a heaven or hell to put me into. Hallelujah. What time is it? Oh, it's 12, 13 already. Let me just finish this, uh, these verses, and we'll close and pick up and do the Lord's will tomorrow. Therefore, repent and turn to God. For many have turned away from God. And they just serving men, God. Man made idols. So that your sin may be raised, so the time of refreshing may come from the Lord present. And he may sin. No, and he may sin. God may sin. God sent, yeah, sure. The Messiah Christ appointed in advance for you. This is Yeshua, yeah, Jesus. He has to remain in heaven. See, you know, he's in heaven, but he want to be in our hearts. So some people are still waiting. <laughs> they think they have him, but they do not. Because they don't even know who he is. He has to remain in heaven until the time comes for restoring everything. As God said long ago, God said, when he spoke through who? The holy prophets. See, many people are prophesying, but that doesn't mean God is always speaking to them. They prophesy a lot of lies out of their own flesh. But Moses himself said, I don't know who raised, who going to raise, God going to raise, up for your prophet, the greatest prophet, Yeshua Jesus, like me, from among your brothers, you are to listen to everything. He tells you. Notice that. You are to listen to John 3.16 only and think you on your way to heaven and you're going to live and stay there when it's for the whole world, not for believers, for God so love the world. That's everybody in the world. Everything he created. He created for a purpose. Connecting the dot. Matthew 28, 20 is where we got in. And teaching them to obey what? Everything. John 3, 16. Everything that I have commanded you. So, when I teach, I'm going to teach everything that he commands me to teach. And remember, just because I do, I will be with you always. He never said he was going to be with everybody. Only those who he's speaking to in Matthew 28, those disciples, when he commanded them to teach everything that he commanded them to teach, he was going to be with them while they were doing it. Hallelujah. But, uh, but a lot of us, we're not teaching everything he commanded us to teach. we just teaching what? Make, feel, make us feel good doctrine. The doctrines of demons. I will be with you always, yea, even until the end of the age world. So, God, I want you to be with me through your son, your sure Messiah, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, not just on Monday, but to the end of my life, the end of the ages. Two men are listening to their spiritual teachers, prophets and prophetess, more than the greatest teacher and prophet, the Messiah, Yeshua Christ. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? See, anytime someone is reading the word of God, you hear the person's voice. You may see their mouth, their lips move. But you are hearing from God as long as they are teaching the word of God. Because my mouth did not write the scriptures. My eyes did not write the scriptures. What wrote the scriptures was holy men of God. God spoke and they wrote. 
And so many people can't understand Yeshua because when he speaks, they think it's God that was speaking to them. But no man have ever heard the voice of God. God spoke to the prophet. Yahshua is the greatest prophet. Just go to Hebrew chapter 1. God spoke in sundry time, olden days, through the prophet. But now God's speaking through his son, Yahshua. So when you hear my voice, you're hearing my voice, but I'm speaking through Yahshua, Jesus. How can I speak through Yahshua, Jesus, if I'm not in Yeshua Jesus. When I'm in Yeshua Jesus, you're hearing my voice. But the words are not mine. I didn't write them. Only words that I may uh, put out there myself because the Spirit revealed it to me. But when I'm in scriptures, I'm just reading. For instance, if I said to you, there's no God beside me. Well, I'm not calling myself God. There's no other God beside me. Who's speaking? God is speaking. So if Yahshua said there's no God beside me, he's speaking whatever his father commanded him to say. If I say love thy God with all thy heart, I didn't say love me with all your heart. you just hearing the word coming through my mouth. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You hear my voice, but those are not my words. Those are God's words just coming through my mouth. And so the only way we can love each other is to love the word of God. The only way we can love each other is to keep the commandments of God. So as I said before, be careful, people. Don't mock or mock and, and, and make fun of the commandments of God. Because if they were there, this would be a much better world. I'm not standing with Republican. I'm not standing with Democrat. I'm standing with the word of God. And so if the word of God was out there as it should, people wouldn't be murdering like they are. People wouldn't be hating like they are. People would realize that if you hate anyone, you are a murderer. And you're going straight to hell. And people don't want to talk about hell. And Jesus talked about hell more than anyone in the Bible because hell wasn't made for you. But if you choose hell, that's where you're going. Because there's it is a choice just like everything else. It's a choice for me to come here and teach God's word. It's a choice for me to stand on the truth. It's a choice for me to lie or not lie because God gave me freedom. It's a choice for me to commit adultery, but everything is not good for me. So I will not be brought under the bondage of any because I know things like that can send me to hell no matter what some lying preacher said. So I'm not going to say anything to you make my family feel good. They don't like it. Shut me off. I'm going to speak the truth to every man because that's what Jesus commands me to do. Speak truth to every man because it's only the truth that's going to make man free. And we just going, just, just listening to everybody. Make me feel good. What well, Pastor said, once I'm saved, I'm always saved. Yeah, you can be saved, always saved, but that doesn't mean you delivered, always delivered. You rescued, always rescue. But what Jesus does is always there. It's not going to change, but that doesn't mean you're going to enter into the gate because you were once saved, as you said. Saved from what? Are you saved from all the mess in our lives? No, he want to cleanse our hearts. He want all of that stuff out because you can't go to heaven and enter into those gates with all that mess in your heart. The devil is a lie, and all those lying pastors that saying that, they're lying to you. So wake up out of your sleep. Stop listening to lies because you don't know when your master is coming. It's time to get it right. That's why Romans 13 said, your final deliverance is nearer 
than when you first believe. You see, when you first believe, you're way away. But that's a final. When God take us out of here, that's a final deliverance. When God send Yeshua back for us, that's final, people. It's too late to change. It's too late to send somebody to heaven. Try to send them there and, and, and not just go to heaven, but try to get them into the gate while they're alive. When they're dead, you can't do it. It's too late. You can't wish it. You can't pray it. It's too late. Now, faith. Today is the day to be delivered. Today is today's salvation. Let's not play with the Lord. I'm angry with lying spirit. I'm angry with you. I'm angry with you. I'm angry with the spirit that lies to you because it's not yet sure. And we are not discerning voices. God loves us, but God give us freedom of choice. God loves us. God is patient. God is kind, but God is nobody's fool. Neither is the son of God. We can't fool God. You can't fool Yeshua Jesus. That's why we're tried. <laughs> That's why you're trying. So you will see what's in your heart. So you can call upon the name of the Lord and he can take it away. That's why the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered from all that mess. But we have to call upon him and, and ask him to take it away. That's why the Bible says, when they call, when man began to call upon the name of the Lord, that's when man began to walk with the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Don't be afraid to ask him to take your mess away. You don't need the garbage. Garbage is for garbage. You need the truth to get all the garbage out of us. I don't want no garbage in me. I want it out. Whatever it's not like God, I want it out. I don't want it in me. Just keep me in bondage. That's what it does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, if we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith, according to the Word of God. In Romans chapter ten, verse uh, Rome, I mean Romans chapter number four and five. If we believe on God, how many of us believe on God? But He's not finished. If we believe on God and believe that God raised His Son, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, that's what justifies us. Get us out of Egypt. Get us out of the world. But once we're justified, we're just entering a race. And now it's time to run that race all the way to the end. Now many things are required of us. You, nothing was required of us because God is good to the ungodly and he's good to the godless. See, ungodly are those who are without God who will not even stand in the judgment according to Peter in Psalm chapter 1. And so once we're in the Son of God, we're in Yeshua the Messiah, Things are required of us. This is when we go to work. Work out your own salvation. Work out your own deliverance. If we confess with our mouth that God has raised him, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart, I mean, we're justified. When we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart that God raised Yeshua Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart, man, believe it. Man, continue to believe unto righteousness. And confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon Adonai, call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Then you go to Mark 16, 16. He that believeth, continue to believe, and is baptized, shall be saved. But he that believeth not, shall be damned. That means if we do not continue to believe, we will go to hell. We will be damned. That's what it means. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, that means to agree with God that sin is sin. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Who do not want to be completely clean? And then you go to uh, uh, Romans, uh, Proverbs 28, 13. He that confesses and forsakes his sins, repent. Shall have mercy, but how can we look for God's mercy when we are not confessing and we are not repenting? That means changing, turning away from stuff. So he that confesses and forsakes his sin shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper. So you ain't going anywhere. It keeps you in bondage. 
So therefore, confess your sin unto the Lord. Remember what David said? I acknowledge my sins. That means I own up to it. And David repented. He didn't continue to sin. So never believe the lie that David was a big sinner. No, he wasn't. David sinned once in that matter with the sheep. Study your Bible. Once. And he acted foolish. Once. Because the spirit stirred up. The Lord stirred up a spirit in him and he counted the people. But he took the punishment because it was him that counted the people until the Lord told the hand to stay. That wasn't that was enough. See, sometimes God allow us to do certain things and we pray for people and then they get punished until the angel says, Stop. That's enough now. Stop. And sometimes it stops. But when we continue, it can start back because we are to continue in righteousness. We are to continue in holiness. We are not to continue in sin. But when we confess and repent, turn away from it, the blood of Christ cleanses us. And it's just like we never did it. And I hear people talk about God, mercy, mercy, but they're using God mercy to stay in the mess. God give us mercy. When we repent, as he gave Jezebel mercy, space, time to repent. But she repented not. God give us grace to come out of sin. Not stay in sin, but he give you freedom. You stay there if you want to. But I'm giving you a little space grace to come out. But it's your choice to come out. And it's your choice to stay in. Because if you stay in it, the door will be shut and you won't be able to get in because a reprobate mind is a mind that God cannot and will not deal with. That means our heads are hard and we want to do what we want to do and we refuse to take correction. Remember, they refuse to take correction. True. It's perish. It's cut off. From their mouth. They wouldn't even speak truth. They speak lies to themselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just in case we have someone out there that has not been adopted into the family of God. The Bible teaches us how we are justified by our faith. Believe on God. Believe on him. And you will be adopted into the family of God. It doesn't cost you anything. But faith. Trust. That is going to cost you that. Because everyone doesn't have faith. Everyone doesn't trust. But it's not enough just to trust on God. The Bible says trust in God with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. So if you have not confessed, you're sure. Trust the word of God. And confess with your mouth the Lord you're sure. And believe in your heart that it was God the Father that raised his son. Not himself. Yeshua Jesus from the dead. And out of your heart, you are to continue to believe that all the way to the end. I confess with my mouth, the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart, but God, I know in my heart, that you raised Yeshua Jesus from the dead. So God, help us not only to confess today, but let us continue to confess because Yeshua says, if I can confess him before men he will confess me before you father and his holy angel and god i thank you that i heard his voice that that you said uh yeshua said that i will confess it he was confessing me before our father and god i thank you for him confessing me before you and you want to come he want to confess all our names as simon peter confess him he want us to confess him and you will reveal to us who Yeshua is. And Yeshua will reveal to us who the Father is. So God, I thank you for your word because your word is true. And God, I bless each and every person out there. I ask you to let your blessing fall upon them, God. Search all our hearts, Father. 
You know what's in our hearts. We can't fool you. If unbelief is in our hearts, God, remove it in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. If doubt is in our hearts, remove it in the name of Yeshua. Let us be strong in our faith, strong in our confession. Let us have Holy Ghost boldness and speak that which you put in our mouth. Because it's not us that speak, but the Spirit of our Father that speaketh through us. God, I thank you. Thank you for your Spirit, O oh God, that speak for me, to me, and through me. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise. And God, have mercy on this world. Have mercy on the White House, God. Remove some of the anger, the hatred, the mistrust, the disgusting words, oh God, in the name of Yeshua, bad communication. Remove from everyone's mouth, oh God. Clean their mouth, oh God, in the name of Yeshua. And God, I ask you to shut all the lion's mouth, all the one that lying and deceiving your people and calling hatred in this world. God, shut their mouth. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise because you said, bring all your cares unto me, for I care for thee. And God, I thank you. And I give you praise in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. I didn't say let enemies shut anybody's mouth. I said, God, you shut their mouth. As the Lord closed the mouth, shut the mouth of the lion so Daniel was not heard. So those lying spirits shut their mouth that your people will not be harmed. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise and I will not take it back. Hallelujah. Love you all with the love of Yeshua the Messiah and good to see you all.